Okay, it's starting. Um, yeah, so can you guys, let's all take off our cameras. Okay, I can't believe it. We are live. Um, welcome, if you're watching this, no matter where you're watching this from, no matter when you're watching this, welcome to the Fashion with Friday Academy's costume design workshop. We're so excited to be doing another YouTube live. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start letting the kids in. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, <clears throat> and I hope you enjoy watching this. Yes, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Naomi's coming. She's coming right. Now. I'll be copy. Hi, Jam. Hi, Lauren. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Jules. Hi, Farah. <laughs> Sophia. Hi. Jules. Hello. Hello, Sophia. I remember you when we dropped, I dropped up the package. I love your head wrap. <laughs> if she can hear me. Can you hear me, Sophia? Oh, she can't hear me. Charlize is coming in. Who else is here? Samaya. <clears throat> Hi, Samaya. Hi. Welcome back, sweetie. It's so good to see you. Hi, Dejanay. Where's, Hi. oh, I, I didn't see Dejanay. Hi, Dejanay. Hi. Good to see you guys. So just to know, um, really quick note, we are, we are live on YouTube right now. Um, if you're uh, if your screen is muted, then we can't see you on YouTube. It completely mutes your screen. So please make sure that we can see your face so that you can be a part of this amazing experience. And Victoria, why don't you go ahead and give a, a round of intros to you know, just meet everyone as I let everyone in. All right. Hi, Carrie. Asian A, is your camera working today? It is. Oh, I'm going to turn on a second. Okay. Hi, Stephanie. Okay. Good afternoon. Hi, Charlize. Good afternoon. Oh, hey, Charlize. Hi, everybody. Hi, Charlize. Okay, so we're just giving everyone a chance to come in. Hello, Stephanie. And hi, how are you? I'm great. Oh, oh mom, is, mom is Stephanie. Yes, I'm Stephanie. Yeah, and Lena is the one joining. I just, I was trying to figure out how to change the name, but. Oh, I, I can do it. I can definitely do that. Um, 
Give me one second and I'll do it for you. I'm so excited for today. Have any of you guys ever designed your own Barbie clothes? I'll say you may have. Just one person. Hi, Shanice. Hey Kay. As everyone comes in, just make sure you um you unmute your camera and start the video on the on the Zoom. So Dejanay, what kind of outfit has you, have you made for your Barbie when you design your own Barbie clothes? Um, I made a top for one of my um, board Barbies and a dress for one, I mean, two skirts for one of my girl Barbies. So cool. <laughs> Hi Kay, good afternoon. Okay, so we're still letting some scholars in um, prior to us beginning. Thank you guys so much for being here. We're so excited to workshop with you today. So we just wanna make sure that <clears throat> we have all of our supplies prepared, okay? Um, everyone should have their workstation set up. Um, Make sure you have everything laid out very neatly. Go ahead and give yourself some time if you need to uh, rearrange. We are going to be working with some, you know, some some materials that you're going to need to keep your eye on. Like your, everyone should have their kit uh, with their needles and threads and stuff. Now this can be very dangerous if it's lost. You know, um, this is our first time virtually working with you know, sewing materials and needles. And it's exciting, but just know that it is something that you have to keep your eye on. So um, I know that I asked a lot of the parents to join in to kind of help with that part. Uh, is anyone here without a parent? Is there anyone in here? Just, just write it in the chat if you are working solo today. Go ahead and just put solo in the chat for us. And if you're with your parent, just put with mom or with dad. So go ahead and put that in the chat. Okay. Well, Dejanay, you're good. Dejanay, you're 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 old enough to handle. I know you sew all the time. <laughs> Dejanay's like, I got this. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so go ahead, take the next uh, couple minutes and and get set up. Um, just so you know, in the kit where the needles and the pins are, the needles are in this little spinny wheel and it is very safe in here. Um, the way that you access the needles is just by turning the plastic part of that. And you'll be able to see there's a, a hole that it, um, exposes the part where the needle is supposed to come out. Um, some of you may have tape on it, so make sure you take the tape off so that the, the plastic part can move safely. Uh, and all of your safety pins will be in this little safety kit. So just make sure as you are working um, that you put everything back, everything sharp back into the safety pin kit. If you take a needle out, you don't have to put it back in here, but put it in the kit because it's much easier for you to open up I got to take that. There's tape on this as well, too. So yeah, go ahead and get set up. Please unmute your camera screens. We want to see all your beautiful faces. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. Kim, don't hide that hair. Why are you hiding the hair? I'm sure it looks My name beautiful. is not Kim. My name is Aaliyah. Your name's Aaliyah. Your mom's name is Kim. Okay, let yes, me see. Um, for some Hi, reason, I can't. Kim. Hi, this is mom. 
for some I know. reason I can't um get on the Zoom on the computer. I don't know why it's not allowing me to. So she's using it off my phone. Oh, that's fine. I just changed the name just so I know. It's A L it's A L I Y A H, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. And um Miss Stephanie, can you can you please spell the name that I'm changing on the screen? Okay, I E E N A. Got gotcha. you. If anyone else needs me to change the name, please let me know. I have no problem I do. getting that done. Of course, no problem. Um, we need to change the name to Naomi Maxwell. Naomi, okay. N A O M I, correct? Yes. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. Yeah. Zoom can be a little tricky sometimes. And um, we spent so many workshops calling the daughters the parents' name. So we just want to make sure everyone has their right identity. Hi, Naomi. How are you doing? Naomi, excuse me. So happy to see you. Welcome to the Academy. Um, okay, Shanice, I got your message. Awesome. We won't start without you. All right. So... Before we fully jump in, um, I just wanted to say hello to everyone. My name is Friday Linton, Miss Friday for you guys. I'm the founder of the Fashion with Friday Academy. Excited to be here, excited to meet all of you. I know there are still some scholars that are going to be coming in. So um, we, will, we will start with um, Miss Victoria and you know, by the time we get to intros with Miss Charlize, we're hoping that everyone is in and set up and ready to go. Um, Miss Victoria, how about how you how about you start us off? <laughs> Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Victoria. I am the Fashion with Friday Academy Director of Wellness and Special Projects. Um, I'm excited to be here with you all and see so many new faces. My job with the academy is to, you know, put an emphasis on wellness and <laughs> put an emphasis on wellness and taking care of ourselves uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally while we create and while we uh, pursue these creative careers in fashion and entrepreneurship and all of the great things. So to start off our meeting today, we are going to do a little breathing exercise where I'm going to play some music. And we're just gonna just kind of close our eyes and relax our bodies so that we can center ourselves and be present and ready to create. It's gonna be for about five minutes. Hi, Chantel. And we're gonna start that right now. So guys, just get comfortable. Um, as I play the music, just start with a deep breath, take a deep breath in and then let it go. And as you breathe out, try to release any tension you might feel in your body. So in your shoulders, in your hands, anywhere that you might feel tension in your body, just relax it. And then just keep breathing at a pace that feels natural to you. So you can close your eyes.
And you can start bringing awareness back to your body. Roll your shoulders, wiggle your hands, your feet, and open your eyes. If they're not open already. Okay, how do you guys feel? Thumbs up if you're ready, if you feel good. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to a famous Friday and do some introductions. We can start with you girls. So Naomi, how old are you and where are you from? I'm from New York and I'm seven. And I'm I'm living in Brooklyn and I am in New York. And I want my mom today. And I'm seven. I'm going to be eight soon. Awesome. I'm going to be eight soon. That's great. Well, welcome. So nice to see you today. Safia, hello. How old are you and where are you from? Hello. I'm Safia. I'm 12 and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Hi. Nice to meet you. Okay, Dejanay, how old are you and where are you from? I'm 15 years old and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Nice, you're 15 now, you're getting older. <laughs> okay, Aina, size, so like you pronounce your name? Erlina? Yes, that's how you pronounce my name. Okay, hi, good afternoon. How old are you and where are you from? I'm nine years old and I'm from Brooklyn. Nice. Welcome to the Fashion with Friday Academy. Hi, Carrie. Good afternoon. How old are you and where are you from? I'm 11 and I'm from New Jersey. Awesome. Hey, Samaya, you want to introduce yourself? I'm nine and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Thank you. Hi, Kat. So Maya has a birthday coming up. We have the same birthday. Oh, really? Birthday twins. <laughs> I can tell. I can see. <laughs> Hi, Kay. How old are you and where are you from? I'm nine and I'm from Brooklyn. Nice. So welcome. Happy Saturday. So nice to see you. Hi, Aaliyah. How old are you and where are you from? I'm 12 and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Nice, awesome. Hi, Chantel. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi, my name is Ashaya, but this is my mom's laptop. Okay. How do you say okay, So you? type your name in the chat for me and I'll change it for you. I just want to get the right spelling, okay? Okay. Um... I'm 11 and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Nice, awesome. A lot, of, a lot of Brooklyn, New York scholars today. Hi, Shanice. How old are you and where are you from? I'm 13 and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And hi, Talisha. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm gonna make sure I pronounce it correctly. 11 and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Hi, nice to see you. Everybody is so happy to work with you today. Yes, yes. And thank you for that beautiful, um, oh, we have some more scholars coming in. Thank you for that beautiful breathing exercise, Victoria. Um, it's so important that we remember that we need to make sure that we are checking in with ourselves as we are creating and, you know, being all these beautiful artist uh, or in the industry it's it's so important and you guys are learning that as you get older and you know as you go along and as you workshop with us you'll get to know more about um all of the great exercises that miss victoria does with us so uh how about we do we forgot to intro um a very important pillar of our academy jewels why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself 
Um, hi, everyone. I am Jules. I am the creative community coordinator of the academy and also an executive assistant for the atelier. I've been with the academy for a year now. I think the welcome note, you guys probably saw my name and I did introduce myself in the emails. We're very, very excited to have you guys here. And we're just very grateful that you guys took this opportunity to learn something new. So have fun. Yes, thank you so much, Jules. And also um, Jules is going to be managing the YouTube live for this. So we are currently live on YouTube, as I mentioned in the beginning. And for all of the parents, if you wanna share with your with your friends and family members um, and for the scholars, if you wanna share with your friends too, I'm going to put the link in the chat in just a moment so that you can you know, spread the word. There is a YouTube live prize that we're going to be giving away while Jules is going to be giving away. So definitely have your friends tune in if they wanna win, win something really, really cool. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. So we wanna first introduce um, two amazing women who are here with us today. Our uh, fabrics, our vegan fabric sponsor, Aparis. Um, I want all of you guys to really quickly, as they speak, go in your kits, and I want you to pull out the bag that says the Fashion with Friday Academy, and on the back it says a Paris fur, and go ahead and pull that fur out and hold it up to the camera. Go ahead, just, just rip the bag. You don't have to be so, just go ahead and rip that bag open. Yes, hold that fur up to the camera. Can we get a nice photo of everyone holding up their fur? Go ahead and take it out the bag, Ari. <laughs> rip that bag. <laughs> go ahead and feel how soft, isn't this soft, you guys? Rub it next to your face. It's so <laughs> soft, it's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, so we're all gonna take a picture, right? Um, Everybody hold up your fur and on three, say, we love the fur. <laughs> the faux fur. Ready? One, two, three. We love, love the, the faux, faux fur. fur. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the amazing faux fur is sponsored by uh, Paris and two amazing young women are here today to talk about it. We have Jem and Lauren. Thank you guys so much for being here and workshopping with us. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Oh man, we're <laughs> uh, one, uh, Lauren and I are so excited to be here. Um, this is an honor for us to, to participate with, um, to participate um, with FWFA. So we look forward to learning from you all and seeing uh, where your minds are creatively. Um, and uh, Loren and I are so happy to step into our childhood for a bit and um, join you all for this wonderful Sunday, I mean, Saturday. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, uh, so yeah, we're at Paris um, and this is Loren. She is the co-founder of a Paris. Hey everyone. Uh, designer, creative director, <laughs> so many. So I'll let you um, introduce yourself. Yes, hi everyone. I'm, uh, so my name is Lauren, like Jem said, I'm actually from France, but I also live in Brooklyn, like mm -hmm. a, a lot of you here. And I started my own fashion brand a few years ago. And we do a lot of beautiful coats with all those amazing and soft, colorful um, fabrics and faux fur. So I hope today we're gonna to be able to all have a good time and design a super cute outfit to our beautiful dolls. And I can't wait to see what you guys uh, come up with. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's gonna inspire me uh, to make even better pieces and, and, uh, and coats um, with my fashion brand. So really looking forward to see how creative everyone is uh, in this workshop. And thank you again for having us super exciting uh, afternoon and, and moment with you guys. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you guys so much. Um, we are so excited to have you here workshopping with us. It's, it's amazing to watch two women who, you know, run this great company, um, to watch you guys just, you know, be here and devote your time and dedicate your time to our scholars. So thank you. We do appreciate it. Thank you for sponsoring the fur. Um, 
you guys were going to be using a fur to create some amazing looks today with our, with the legendary costume designer, <laughs> Miss Charlize Antoinette. Um, Charlize has been with our academy for some time now. We actually did a part one to this workshop some time ago. I believe it was the last June. Last June was part one, and this is part two of three. And I just wanna give you guys just a little overview about Charlize. Um, she's been costume designing for over a decade and she established herself as one of the most talented, amazing people in the business. She has a unique talent for creating characters that are imaginative yet grounded in reality. And with her personal fashion influences ranging from 1969 to Afrofuturism, and I know you guys may not understand a lot of these terms, but Charlize is going to break that down for you. Um, Gianni Versace's 90s, as well as her passion for travel and exploring the world. Um, Charlize possesses the ability to create groundbreaking period costumes, as well as vibrant contemporary costumes. So. Charlize, thank you so much for being here with us. Why don't you go ahead and provide a little intro and tell us where we've seen some of your work. Hi. Hey. Yep. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with me, I'm a costume designer and that means I create characters through clothing. So when you watch a TV show or a movie and someone's wearing something, wearing an outfit, wearing, you know, um, whether it's a period piece, like it's set in, you know, the 1920s or 60s, or if it's contemporary or if it's fantasy, the person who decides what people wear are, is the costume designer. And that's what I do. Um, you may have seen some of my work in Raising Dion season one and also the movie See You Yesterday. Uh, I think the rest of my projects are not age appropriate for y'all, <laughs> but uh, the most recent movie I've done is called Juice and the Black Messiah, and it's about um, Chairman Fred Hampton and the Black Illinois Black Panther Party, and it took place in 1969, which is one of my favorite decades in fashion because so many things that we know as modern silhouettes were established during that time, and particularly, um, you know, cemented into fashion in in that time. So, for example, when we did the movie, we found that a lot of the menswear silhouettes were very, very, very much the same and only changed slightly. Um, you know, like Levi's jeans. There was a popular jean during that time that men still wear to this day, which is the 505 jean. So, you know, things like that. Also Adidas sneakers were worn back then and people wear, you know, the gazelle sneaker to this day. So, um, you know, so that's, that's me in a nutshell. And today we're gonna have a lot of fun. I want today to be, um, you know, informative, but I also want you guys to be able to play and have fun. And if you have questions or um, need help, I'm here. And I'm also sure Laura can help too when it comes to, you know, figuring out garment construction as well, put you on the spot. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we're gonna have a lot of fun today. I already started making my fur vest. I have to, I have to finish it now. And I'll just talk to you guys about finishing and also how to sew so you don't see what's on the inside on the outside, right? So um, Pride, do you wanna, should we just jump in and go ahead and start? Uh, honestly, so uh, before we start, I just wanna make sure that everyone knows what's in their kit. Yeah. So um, can everyone, as we, as Charlize and I, and I'll let you know what you are looking at, can you just hold it up to the screen? So Charlize, I'll start with the little baggies. Yes. All right, so we have some pom-poms. Got some little colorful pom-poms. Hold it up to the screen as you see them. And you can go ahead and remove it. I know some of them are like binder clipped together. Go ahead and let that loose. Make sure it's neat on your desk. Great. Now we have some feathers. Have some feathers for you. Um, this bag right here, where it looks like there's a tiny little black snake in there. <laughs> this is a sequence. And if you open it up, um, pull it apart, you'll be able to see it's like a beautiful shiny black sequence, right? Okay. Charlize, what's this? Let us Velcro. know what this is. 
Velcro, because we mm-hmm. have to think about Velcro. how our doll is going to get in and out of their outfit. <laughs> yeah. And what we tried to do was just give you guys simple but easy um, materials. You know, we didn't want to provide a zipper because that would take forever to learn how to sew a zipper on. So a Velcro was really easy. Charlize, what about this? These little sticks. So these are zip ties. And, and how do we use them? We can use these as belts. And we can also potentially cover them in fabric as well and make a belt mm-hmm. and cinch, cinch a dress to the dolly. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a pair of scissors, kids safe scissors. Parents, if you are workshopping with us and you, um, you are trying to like cut through fabric, uh, you, you can use a, I have an ex- exacto, only if the parents are here, we did not provide exacto knives or hot glue guns because those are very dangerous um, things. The danger level starts to go up a bit <laughs> with those materials. So if you guys do have it at home, um, I was using an exacto knife to cut the swatches of the Aparis sponsored fur. Uh, if you are cutting the fur, make sure you're turning it on the raw side, which is the side that's not fuzzy. And that's how you want to cut it because then it'll be everywhere. Um, also, yes, so make sure you have all of your Paris fur. You also have some recycled uh, swatches, some tool, some silk. We have some, you know, just a nice little variety for you guys. Also, uh, your doll. Can everyone hold up their doll? Yes. Awesome, awesome. And I'm I'm happy that some of you pulled out some of your dolls as well. The dolls should come with like little shoes. So feel free to decorate the shoes as well too. You know, that's all a part of the look. The shoes came in the box and they're super small. So I know that they disappear very easily. (laughs) Um, I won't be using a doll today. I'm using a tiny little mannequin. So I'm very excited. Um, Also, the most important thing, your hand sewing, sewing kit. Mm-hmm. Now, Charlize, do you want to break down what they have in that little kit? Yeah, absolutely. So you have a box of safety pins and buttons. And if you want to use buttons today, you can. I can do some demos and show you guys like how to hand sew buttons and stuff quickly. Um, safety pins are good to hold your fabrics together as you're sewing it. Um, you know, when you're sewing, you want to put the fabric face to face so that you don't see the seams on the outside. So you can safety pin it together while you're sewing your seams. This is hand sewing needles and it has a little wheel you turn as Friday demonstrated earlier. And there's a little opening so you can get a few out. Um, there are some small spools of thread. There's blue, green, red, white, gray, and black. There's also a measuring tape, which is going to be helpful because we need to measure our doll so we know how much fabric we're cutting. There is a needle threader, which I never use, (laughs) but it's here. And a thimble, which I also don't use, and I should because I definitely stabbed my thumb recently. So please use this as you're hand sewing on your thumb. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a tiny scissor but I believe the ones Friday the the scissors that come in these kits are never sharp so I don't even know if you're going to want to use these because Friday provided much better scissors for you Um, and I think that's yeah that's everything in the sewing kit so all the essentials yes all right so now that you guys know what's in your kit um there was a pre-workshop assignment for you guys to complete. Very simple, it was a little design assignment. Um, If you were able to sketch your design beforehand, uh, can you give us a a little raise hand? Go ahead and raise your hand up if you were able to sketch your design beforehand. All right. What about you, Aaliyah? Were you able to sketch? Nice. I know how to sketch, but I didn't do it yet. Okay, no problem. Well, if you have it printed next to you, you know, at, at least you have it with you. Um, you could also, we could freestyle too, Charlize, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's, not, a pre, it's not a prerequisite. I mean, mm-hmm. here's, here's the thing. Sometimes I sketch something 
and then I get the materials and then I change my design, right? So it's okay if you if you sketch something and now that you have all these materials, you have new ideas. That's totally fine. Yeah. All right. So let's jump on in. Awesome. So I wanted to um, share my screen really quickly and go over the the um, the pattern pieces and the different silhouettes just so we could talk through them. Um, so I'll share my screen really quickly. Okay. So <clears throat> these are different names and shapes for dresses. And as you're doing your sketches, you know, as a designer, you would keep these shapes in mind and draw, you know, your garment on your figure, you know, to, to match some of these shapes. So if you wanted a fitted dress, it would be bodycon. And so you would have the dress be pretty fitted to the body go in a bit, come out at the hip, go back out. Um, if you wanted something to be a shift dress, you would draw it more like in this trapezoid, trapezoid kind of shape. Um, and then strapless, you know, this is strapless, so there's no straps. Um, Empire is the, the bodice is starting right under the bust. So these are just different design shapes and elements um, for you guys to get familiar with as you're drawing and as you're making your designs, right? Um, same thing with skirts. Here's different skirt shapes as you're drawing and you're making your designs. And if you guys have specific questions, like I can show you guys today how to do, um, how to do a pleat and we'll, I can show you how to make a little tool skirt out of the tool that we have as well. So yeah, these are all the different skirt shapes. Um, anybody have any questions about these so far and then what's your favorite skirt shape I love a good pleated skirt and a tool skirt <laughs> <laughs> also I, I like a, a pencil shape as well right. um yeah I mean wrap skirts are fun too sarongs like all I, I like skirts I'm a skirt girl and then these are pants so different shapes for our pants, you know, straight legs, skinny, boot cut, flare. So, you know, flare is gonna come out a lot more and you can make an exaggerated flare, which could be really fun as well. Um, wide legs, which are wide from the hip on down. Um, you know, then there's some jean shapes, these brush pants, bush pants, which are kind of, kind of like a modified cargo, um, you know, cargo pants, sailor pant with all the buttons hot pants or, you know, short shorts, um, skorts, jumpsuits, overalls, palazzo hair. So lots of fun pants shapes as well. Um, if anybody wants to get into making pants today, we can go over that, but it's a little, a little trickier. Um, we have to do a lot of measuring of our dolls to make pants, but if anybody wants to make pants, we can work on that today as well. But I was guessing most of us are gonna do like skirts and tops and dresses and maybe a vest with the fur or something like that, right? Um, or maybe, I don't know, I might make a fur tube top today. I don't know. <laughs> I think I want to make a tiny little fur bag, like a tiny little, oh, a little clutch. Oh, that would yeah. be cute. That would be super, super cute. I want to make so, a hat. <laughs> a fur hat? Nice. Yeah, a little tool, like a little, like a little 20s uh, period piece. I love that. Oh, That's I love it. Awesome. That would be awesome. Um, let's see. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys um, one of my sketches. Um, I'm pause share for a second. So I had an event recently and I sketched a dress and I made a dress. So this is my sketch. And that was my fabric swatch. This is the front. And this was the back. And then I ended up making the dress, which is here. Oh, so but I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to share my screen one more time and show you guys um, the actual photo. Hold on, how do I share my screen again? <laughs> there we go. So this is the photo. So just showing you guys how you can go from a sketch to a design, right? So. <clears throat> 
you know, I, I had my idea, I put it on paper. The dress changed a little bit from my sketch to the actual um, three-dimensional garment. The skirt shape changed. I had a much uh, straighter skirt and the skirt ended up being a little bit more A-line with some, some, <clears throat> some darts, you know, to give it a nice structural architectural kind of shape. Um, and then it, I ended up having like a, a, a wider waistband than I originally planned. So as you sketch things, you'll see how, you know, once you start making the garment, it might change a bit based off of like your real life needs. So I just wanted to show you guys that as an example. Um, and what was that look for? That's special. Oh, so I was nominated for a w award for the movie. Yay! And we did a, a, a pre-taped red carpet because of COVID. So I showed up, I had a time slot, I took a picture and I ran away. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank what kind you. of fabric did you use for that dress? So I have some of the fabric here because I might try to recreate it for my doll. I love it. Um, it's, it's a foil coated jersey you see so it's a foil coated jersey it's very noisy but very lightweight and actually wasn't as hard to work with as i thought it was going to be it does not have much stretch at all or any because it's you know it's foil coated um but the fabric underneath without the foil would have a lot of stretch but there's no stretch in this fabric at all so i had to um, use hook and eyes for a closure. I had to um, use snaps for closures and stuff like that because when you have a garment with no stretch, you have to figure out how you're going to get in and out of it, right? So just keeping that in mind as you're making your pieces for your dolls. <clears throat> um, I wanted to show you guys just like some fun stuff um, really quickly. So I I started playing around with the fabrics. So if you wanna make a shape like this, you cut a piece of fabric in like a, kind of like a half moon kind of shape. And then you loop the thread. You see how the thread is like in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And then you pull it and you got a nice little, for me, this is gonna be a nice little sleeve, you know, for my girl. Yeah, I learned that trick. I remember in, um, I took a design class at FIT some years ago mm -hmm. and I learned that little gathering trick. You can use that for pleated skirts as well too. Yeah, so you can definitely use this for a pleated skirt or <clears throat> you can do another way to make pleats, which is you fold, you fold, you fold, you fold and you iron. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. So let me do it like this. So you fold, you iron to make the pleat. And then you fold again. It's hard to do without actually ironing it. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. And then That's you- what my mom taught me. <laughs> iron again. So just showing you guys like different techniques, or if you don't want to iron, you don't want it to be hard creases in the pleats, you don't have to um, iron it, right? So you can just sew across here and then kind of let the skirt do what it wants to do. So it's not a hard, hard pleat. So it's up to you how you wanna do your pleats, but that's kind of what it would look like, right? Once you sew it on the top. Um, oh, tool skirt. I do tool skirts in a similar way as I do this. I always just gather the tool, gather, 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 gather. Um, imagine I'm sewing this and gathering, but this is the beginnings of a tool skirt. And then I would just cut it and shape it really, really nice at the end. Um, and then waistbands, you know, if we're gonna make skirts, we need waistbands. So what you would wanna do is cut a little, well, one, we have to make sure we measure our girl. So we know what size her waist is, right? Does anybody know, does anybody wanna measure her waist and tell me what size their waist is? Okay, so I know all of you have your 
little measuring tapes. Um, so if you look in your kit, in your sewing kit, this little box right here, you'll see this tiny little tape, it's like a paper tape. And this is how you measure. So why don't you guys go ahead and <clears throat> you wanna start at zero. You wanna make sure that the ruler starts at zero and you wanna wrap it around your Barbie's waist. Go ahead and wrap that around your Barbie's waist. And that's how you measure um, the size of the waist, the, the, the width or the, am I saying it right, Charlize? The width of the waist. Yes. <laughs> um, the width, size, both work. Mm -hmm. So I have- It's not too wrapped around. You just wanna make sure it's just enough. Can somebody tell us what the measurement is of that? Anybody have it? You want to raise your hand or Dejanae shout it out? Has it. Go ahead, Dejanae. Oh, go Dejanae. <laughs> um, I have three and a half inches. Awesome. My girl is four. Does anyone have a different measurement? Go ahead, Naomi. What is she? Sorry, we had to unmute. Okay. It's okay. Which one? How much was it? Let's measure. Let's put it here. It was what? It was like four. Four and four. one line and one line in. Four one. Okay. One line. So I think. Um, let me look at this measuring tape. Okay, so it's four and an eighth. That would mm -hmm. be four and one eighth. So when you're sewing, you have to be really good at math, and you have to be really good at fractions. <laughs> <laughs> Like when you start pattern making and all that, math is so important. So if you want to design and sew, you gotta be really good at math and know your fractions. So make sure you're paying attention at school when you're doing your fractions and your decimals because it's very, very important when it comes to sewing. Absolutely. All right, so knowing that my girl's waist is four inches. Like Why don't you go ahead and write that down too? Yeah, let's, oh yeah. Actually, we should measure the whole doll. Let's just measure the whole doll and get that done. There so we go. Know, we know what our what we're working with, right? So in your kit, the, the little post-its that you have and the pen, go ahead and pull that out. And we're going, and Charlize is going to help you guys measure your, your model because this is exactly what you'd have to do if you're a costume designer or a stylist or a fashion designer. Um, and also, I know we have some girls that just came in. Hello, welcome. Um, when we, right before we go on break, we're going to do another quick little intro, okay? So, hi, Nivi, hi, Majesty, hi, Taya. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show my, um, my workspace because we're gonna start with shoulder. Bus, wave. And Victoria, can you put the measurement in the chat for us too, please? I think some people's dolls might be different. So, and that's that's what happens in real life because everybody's different in real life too. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna start there, and then we'll also measure her height and stuff like that. But. So we're gonna start with the shoulder. So the shoulder is, you guys can see from here to here, right? So <clears throat> in real life, you would do front and back, but I think for our Barbie girl, we're fine <laughs> um, to do the back because I believe that's gonna be a little easier. So let's see. I know what I got. Does anybody want to yell out what they got? Or raise your hand? Or put it in the chat, however you yeah. feel. Yeah, put One, it in the chat. Five. Okay, we have some, some, some answers in the chat. Uh, actually, yeah, it's just under, see, I'm not very good at fractions. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have, I, I have 1.7. I got two and an eighth. Yeah, I have two, two and an eighth as well. So you have 1.75, so one and three fourths or one and seven lines, just seven eighths. Yeah, because shoulder to shoulder. So I have actually 2.3. Two, two I want to ask a question. 
Oh, Where exactly do you start on the measuring tape? Oh, so there's this extra space. You can fold this back and start at the one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this question. is a little confusing because there's an extra, there's a little extra. So Great. I usually just fold it back. And also, if you guys have any questions at all, because I know this is a little new, um, please unmute, ask the question, or put it in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I think most of us got around two. Sorry, could you show quarter, us? Or, sorry, sorry Charlize, could you show us where you folded the tape measure at again? Oh, yeah, sure. So there's like all this extra space before that first line. I just folded it back. So it's not in the way. Sorry, my nails are in the way though. <laughs> nails oh, are great. <laughs> thank you. So yeah, there's this extra little piece. I mean, honestly, if you wanted to cut it off, you can, if it's in your way, um, it's up to you. Cause we, we don't really need it. So if you guys wanna like cut it right at that first line you can, or I just folded it back. And then again, we're gonna measure shoulder to shoulder. So I got, yep, I got like two and an, two and an eighth. So two and one of the lines. So if you guys know how to read this, these, these lines, so each one of these lines is an eighth because it's the inches separate into eight parts. Halfway through is four eighths, so that's a half an inch or an inch and a half if you're going this way. And then um, this is a quarter, so two is a quarter, four is a half, three quarters, one inch. Does that make sense? Um, you don't have to take the doll off, but if, if it's easier, I mean the dress off, excuse me. Um, if you, if it's easier for you to do the measurements, you can, but you don't have to. Cause you know, when you measure someone, you don't make people in real life get naked to measure them. You make sure they wear clothes that aren't super baggy and gonna be in the way, but it's not a prerequisite that anyone has to take off their clothes to get measured in real life. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bust, which is the widest point at the chest. You see right here. And these measurements that we're doing can translate to you in real life. So if you wanted to measure yourself later or have your parent help measure you, so you can write down your measurements and start like making clothes for yourself, you can. So the bust measurement is the widest point here. I'm gonna go around. It's so hard working with this tiny doll. <laughs> I'm like so used to like doing this on humans. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So I got about, Five. I got five. No, actually five and a quarter. So make sure you guys are writing down all of your measurements, okay? Just so that we can have that. Yeah, I got five and a quarter. What did y'all get? No, I got five. I'm at, I'm at five. Five inches. What did y'all get for bus? They might get anything different? No. Some people got three inches and four inches for the shoulders. So they might, your shoulders might be a little broader on your doll. So yeah, a lot of y'all got five inches as well. Great. Okay. So now we're going to do the waist. This, this will be the waist on our girl because it would be the smallest point right in here. Right. And sometimes you do a high waist measurement on a, on a person and like a low waist. Um, but for our purposes, we're just gonna do the regular waist, which is right in here. Does everybody see how it goes in? 
right here to measure the waist. Let me see if I can show it from the side. Does everybody see that indentation? So that's the waist. And some people are ahead of the game and they got their waist measurements. Let me see if mine's the same. And Charlize, what do you usually do um, on set when you don't have measuring tape? Is there another creative way that you could measure your clients? Yes, you can use string. You can string. use string mm -hmm. and, and mark it off and then measure the string. So if you don't have a measuring tape, the, the, the trick is marking the string or cutting the string and knowing what's what. So you gotta be really organized if you don't have a measuring tape. And ideally it would just be like, you needed one measurement and not that you had to measure someone's whole body with string. <laughs> so it might be like, oh, I just needed like a neck measurement real quick. Let me measure with string. And then I'll measure it when I get back to my truck or my office or whatever. Okay, so the, everybody got their waist measurement? I got six inches from mine. Let I mean, me not six inches, two inches. I got two inches from mine. Did you wrap it all the way around? Oh, I need to do that? Yes. So in that case, if you just measured the front, you would just double it. So, you know, for, for the waist, usually that works. Doesn't work like that for the hip or the bust. But for the waist, usually you can just double it. <clears throat> um, but for the hip and bust, it doesn't really work like that because, um, you know, some people's chests stick out further than their back width and, you know, stuff like that. So you can't really use that rule for every part of your body. So for your hip, your hip measurement is going to be your widest point and it's including your behind. So you see where there's a curve to her behind and a curve to her hips. That's where we want to measure her and wrap it all the way around both points, the widest points. So I got five. Yeah, I see Samaya, you said you have five and a quarter for the hip, four inches for the waist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and type those uh, hip measurements in there, ladies. Let's see what you guys got. 4.5. Nice. And why is this an important first step, Charlize, just in general? Well, because it helps us to know how much fabric we need and um, just, it just, it's, this is your roadmap for making clothing. You can't make clothes unless you know your measurements, basically. So it helps you to know how your design's going to work on that particular body type, how much fabric you need, how much elastic you need. Do you need a zipper? Do you need, you know, um, Velcro, will you need a snap at the waist? Or, you know, because some people have really small waist and then they have really wide hips. So you have to make adjustments based on measurements. So measurements are really, really important. Because like, okay, now that I know <clears throat> what my girl's waist size is, it's like, okay, I have to adjust how much, you know, how much tool I have, all that. So, like, okay, well, I can't gather it as much as I want it to, you know? So you make different decisions based off of knowing your dimensions of your client or yourself. Copy. So I, I started making this fur vest after measuring um, my girl earlier and then realized that the fur was a little thick to make sleeves. So I made a vest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, look at that. Hold so on, I'm I gonna spotlight you. Go ahead. So I'm gonna show you guys like just how to clean it up, right? Because it's kind of raw. There's a bunch of like seams. So when I put it on, you can see all this stuff. So I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna like show you guys how to like do a little bit of that. So we can. Make can you hold it up for us so that we can see the? So you guys, she made a tiny yeah. little fur vest with the Paris fur. And I'm gonna put it back on my doll. Yeah, how creative. So, 
So what I want to do is I want to like make it so you can't see some of this stuff. I just want you to see fur. So I don't want you to see the inside like this. So I'm going to like sew the fur in and make it real neat, right? Same thing for the back. I'm going to sew this part down. This part is fine. This little neck part is fine. I'm going to sew this part, fold it in and sew it down. So you can't see that, right? You see, just want to make, I don't know if you can see it, but I just want to make things like really neat. Mm -hmm. See, we don't want to see that. I want to tuck it in and sew it under, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to work on now. And how I just want to show you. Hmm? How did you cut it to make the vest? Like, do you have to draw I'll on the... You. Yeah, you can draw on the inside of the fabric. So I made two pieces. I made two rectangles, one wider, one thinner, and then I sewed it about, let's see, let's measure this measurement. So I sewed the edges about two and a half on this side. It should match, but I was freestyling. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, so it's two and a half on either side. And you can mark this off by using safety pins. So you can put a safety pin at two and a half and then Put some more safety pins here so you can hold the fabric together while you sew it. And then I left this part open so she can get in and out of it like a vest. And then same on this side, safety pinned it together, sewed it. I cheated early, I used my machine. Um. <laughs> okay, so should we set up our needle and thread? Do, do, do we wanna- Yeah, I'm gonna show you guys right now. All right, so you guys, we are starting with the needle and thread. So just make sure in front of you on your table, you have some clear space because as I mentioned, you always want to see where your needle and thread is. So even if you guys have like a napkin or something that you can put the thread on, um, I mean, sorry, the needle on after, just so that you can see it, just make sure that you have, it's not just floating around, okay? Because we want to be safe 100% of this of the time. So go ahead and also, take out your thread. They can also stick the needle into the thread. So that's what I do to, to keep track of my needles. And that's what a lot of people do, a lot of tailors and you know people who hand sew a lot. I'm gonna show you how we do it mm -hmm. once I get this open. <laughs> Okay, so Jasmine, you asked, do you use any fabric? Go ahead and unmute and at, um, ask that question, Jasmine. What do you mean by that? Like these ones, do we use like, like a certain color or do we like use our own colors that we want to choose? You can use any color you want. I'm just showing you what I did and just so you can see like some sewing techniques and we can learn how to thread a needle and stuff like that. But you can pick any fabric color, any thread color you want. Oh, I have a question too. Yes. Like, do you need a certain size of thread? Like, do you need a certain length of thread? So I, I, I err on the side of more just so I, cause I don't like running out in the middle of sewing, but you don't want to have too much. So let's start with like 12, inches no mm -hmm. yeah 12 inches maybe and a little just, more than that we just had some practice measuring so if you guys wanted to measure the amount of thread that you have go ahead but, so go but ahead. double it yeah double it so not 12 not 12 one piece double double it like this and measure 12. all right so go ahead and do that let's give everyone some time to um is it is it asia that's how you pronounce Asia Rogers. Did I pronounce it right? Ashaya. Ashaya. I'm so Ashaya. sorry. Ashaya. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Ashaya, you were doing a really good job there. Go ahead and, and get close to the camera and show us how you doubled it just now, just for the for the younger girls. Um <clears throat> you So first you just do it like this, mm -hmm. like do it like this. Yep, perfect. perfect. I hope everyone- yep, And make sure you get it nice and smooth with no knots. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ashaya. Perfect. You're welcome. 
Now I lost my needle. Hold on. Okay, here it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I, back on here. This is why I have this rubber mat because you can stick them in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to make sure everyone has their needle threaded. Um, and Does then everybody know how to thread their needle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If anybody needs help, oh, I'll just, I'll do it really quick. Sorry, Friday, go ahead. I just wanted to make sure they knew how to do it. No, 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 that's fine. Go ahead, please. No, what were you saying? Oh, no, I was going to say, I know, um, Dejeuner, I know you have a lot of uh, experience with threading the needle. Would you like to give us a little demo? <laughs> Go ahead and yes, get please. the camera. Oh, um, I already threaded my needle, but um, I guess I will use this one. Okay. So, um, Okay, so tell us what we're looking at. Tell us what we're looking at. So I have this black thread. Um, and my needle. I can... You know what? I'm just going to... But you can always use the needle threader. You can see my needle. You need to put the needle thread through the needle first. And then... Um, you can't really see the hole, but there's a hole. And you put your thread through the needle threader. And sometimes the thread is a little stubborn and doesn't want to go into the needle hole. So we have a couple of tricks. You can take your scissor and just cut a nice sharp edge with the, um, with uh, of the thread so that it's not, you know, the edge of the thread is not loopy and, and weak. So you just wanna cut a little piece off and then go ahead and thread that right in there. You could even um, moisten the edge of the thread just a little bit, maybe with some, you know, with some saliva or with your, with some water, just to make sure that it gets in there. And then once you have your, your needle threaded go ahead and let us know in the chat just tell us got it and you got to make sure we knot the end when you've got it threaded so you want to show that as well Dijanae? well um you can like traditionally just tie a knot at the end mm -hmm. when both um ends meet um i wrap it around my index finger twice and I just spin it all the way off my finger and I pull it through and I cut a knot. But you know that may not work for everyone. Hey, thank you, Dejanine. My nails are too long for that way today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it. I think I got it. Got it. Okay, we have some Victoria, who do we have in the chat that, that that's got it? Um, Taya got it, Sophia got it, Talisha got it, so three so far. I'm still working on mine because my nails too. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Maya. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll find, like, I have to make this not bigger, so I have to do it one more time because the holes in the... um the fur fabric are bigger than my knot. So I'm gonna do it one more time. And also um, for all of the sewers in here, um, how, many, how many needles do you typically thread before you begin? Cause that's another question um, that I've always had as a kid. Would you just do one or would you do multiple? I mean, if you're smart, you do multiple. Do I? Not always. You can also buy, um, <laughs> you can buy pre-threaded needles. So they sell packs of pre-threaded needles um, in a kit that kind of looks, it's kind of similar, but it's, um, it's longer and it's, it's plastic and it has like different color threads and they're lined up and you just pull the needle out and it's threaded already. So that's like a really cool trick um, is to buy pre-threaded needles. And that makes it easier on you for all these like finishing things that we have to do. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so they, I'm gonna raise their hand. Sorry, go ahead, Deja. No, go ahead. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. Um, like I usually do too, be- um, because like I'm not a fast better, so I don't really need that much time. And um, if I'm gonna do something for a long period of time, I do four, and I make sure that I wax it and iron it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I love it. I'm like Dejanae, you need to teach the class. Listen, Dejanae <laughs> is she is the bomb. Okay, she knows. I love how to, it. She sews and makes many amazing things, and I hope that she shows us something new before the end of the class. <laughs> Me too. Okay. okay. Is everyone? So I'm. Oh, I'm yeah. still struggling with mine. Uh oh, who is Aaliyah. that? I know it takes time. It takes time and practice. Just, I got my thread with the nails. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing over there, Shanice? Show us, show us your, your progress. You good? All right. And Aaliyah, if it's too hard, maybe pick out another needle. Because sometimes there might be some holes that are a little bigger on the on other ones. Yeah, the the hole sizes are different. So why don't you pick out a needle that has a bigger hole? And for those of you who are waiting, you can go ahead and thread another needle. It's it's always good to have more than one. Um, Taya, how you doing over there, honey? Doing good, perfect. Sophia, how are you doing? You got yours together? All right, awesome. Got it. You got awesome. it. And who else? Naomi, how's Naomi doing? She ran to get a charger, but we're good. We have our needle okay. threaded. Okay, perfect, perfect. Awesome. What about you, Jasmine? How you doing, Jasmine, up there? Are uh, you still working? Okay, take your time. No rush. What about you, Nivi? How, how is it going up there? Good. Oh, I got cool. it. Okay, perfect. Oh, good. <clears throat> Did Aaliyah get it yet? Aaliyah no. had to adjust her camera. She's like, all right, we serious business here. We have to. I see. <laughs> That's fine. This was something that I remember struggling with it's for hard. years. And then for some reason, I just got it. You know, practice is, is what helps you to get it a lot quicker practice in different needles yep Jem, lauren you guys got it over there all right cool <laughs> else we have stephanie how are you doing honey did you get it give me a little thumbs up or... no no you didn't get it yet okay i might need to cut it if you guys are having a hard time, I, I, I'm threading the needles that um, came with the sewing kit and I cut the end and it, and it went through. So you might have to cut the end if you're having a hard time of the thread. Go ahead and cut the end of it, Aaliyah and Stephanie. Look, if you look up at the screen really quickly, the end of the thread, just go ahead and give it a fresh cut. Because what happens is, as Miss Charlize mentioned, when you keep trying to push it through, it gets a little, it gets a little tired, gets a little weird, the thread. Yeah. Yeah. And also look at the needles because some of the needles are bigger than others and they have bigger eyes than the others. Mm-hmm. So. And then it, but, don't, yeah, don't feel discouraged. Easy. You could use, we have so many other tools here for you to use. You can use the safety pins. You can use the zip tie, the Velcro to hold it together. So just in case the threading of the needle is just not, you know, you, it's just not coming to you right now. It's okay. It's all right. All right, Charlize, what are we, um, let's slowly shift into what we are doing right after threading the needle. What's next? Okay. So I just wanted to show you guys <clears throat> how to, um, how to sew, sew something together so that you don't see the seams on the outside. Sometimes people like to see the seams on the outside and that's like a particular design detail. 
Um, you know, it was very popular in the 90s and it's come back. So people are doing a lot of that where there's raw edges. But for my coat, I didn't want to do that. So I had these two rectangular pieces that I cut and I put them face to face, which is fur to fur. So when we say face to face, it's whatever we want on the outside. So you see how you can't see my stitches? It's because I sewed it on the inside like this. So what I'm trying to do now is really hide all the inside. So I'm trying to finish my jacket. So I'm gonna tack this inside here. So when, you, when she has it on, all you see is, Fur and not the inside. So before attacking it, you would see all this, but now who's that? It's us. Quick question. When we're folding the um the piece of fur, should we mm -hmm. fold it so that the measurement matches kind of like the the leftover piece will be um what the shoulder measurement will be of two and an eighth? So let me see, let me see your piece. Okay. So I, can I don't know which guys... side, I don't know which end to start with the, this piece or this, you know, it looks more, it looks like a square. So I think. So I can give you guys to... my measurement. If you want to make the exact same thing, I can give you guys my measurement. So it's going to be wider than the shoulder because when, what you're going to do is when you put it on, it's, it's covering the shoulder, the bust, all the way down to the hips. Okay. So it's not the shoulder measurement. I measured from, for this jacket, I measured from the shoulder down to the hip. And then I measured around this area for that top piece. Okay. I measured around the neck to about the waist. So I can give you the, the measurements. And it's, this is like an easy trick because it's just two rectangles. It's just two rectangles, so it's easy. Well, quick best. Okay, so I'll quick. tell you. Yeah, I'll give you the measurements, but I'm listening. Um, I did like I kind of I don't know if you could see it, but mm -hmm. based on the based on the length, you have to cut different like sizes of rectangles. Yes. So I'm gonna give you those measurements now. So for the top rectangle. I love that you I... said, Aaliyah, by the way. Um, Aaliyah, can you hold hold up your Hold up no, your it's good. Once hold up your fur once more. Tell us why you why you drew um, on the back of the fabric just so mm -hmm. that um, the girls could know. Because if like if you do it this way, you will be able to see it, and the fur will get cut everywhere. So I put it mm -hmm. on the other side, so it's easy for me to cut it more neater. Yes, ma'am. There you go, girl. You know what you're perfect. Did. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I have nine inches. So nine inches this way for both pieces. And then for the wider rectangle, the width is, just double checking. Yeah, two and a half for the wider one. So you, again, you can use your ruler, straight edge, um, and draw directly on the back of the fur. So maybe what I will do is I will make a second one out of a different color. So we can do this together. So I have my ruler. Um, where is my... I'll use this one. So we use all kinds of fun rulers. So this ruler has a bunch of shapes in it, which helps when you're making patterns and sewing. You need all kinds of curves. So where is my ruler with inches though? Because this one does not have inches. Sorry, y'all. Ah, there it is. 
I like these clear rulers the best because you can see the lines and then you can also see your fabric. So I use these clear rulers. Okay, so we said <clears throat> nine inches by two and a half, right? So I'm just gonna make some dots until I measure the width. <clears throat> and for now those of you next. who are, um, I know not everyone is creating this beautiful little fur um, vest that Charlize is making, but please know that you can also start working on other little parts of your outfit, whether it be the skirt or whether it be, you know, a, a pant. Charlize is just demoing um, one type of, uh, you know, one type of garment. So go ahead and if you're watching along and doing the same thing, she'll give you some guidance. But if you have something that you want to freestyle, go for it. Because the goal is at the end of today's workshop, we want to have a full outfit for our, um, for our model, right? So go ahead and start your creations. Yeah, there's no pressure to make this vest, but I figured since there's so much beautiful fur, that's what I would do first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Please utilize the fur. And if you guys need inspiration or, you know, you weren't able to sit down and map out your inspiration prior, we are creating looks for our favorite um, character in a movie. Um, per the worksheet, you guys were supposed to think about a character in a movie that you love and create a new outfit for said character. So if you didn't, um, I know I didn't ask you guys to put it in a chat before, but I'd love to know what character you guys are designing for. You know, whether it be Ariel in The Little Mermaid or a character in a show that you watch right now you're creating that look for them. And you know that'll give you some inspiration based upon things that you may have seen this character wear. And you could pick any TV show or any movie um, to make this look for. Oh, Lauren, I see you have something going on there. What's that? Show us, <laughs> please. So a fun fact, guys, I do have a fashion brand, but I never went to design school. <laughs> Or <laughs> with designers and I share with them my inspo but every time I see fur I love to make a dramatic moment so right now I need to make holes for the sleeve but I'm making an oversized dramatic poncho yeah <laughs> and then how course, fun yeah she needs to have a little you know scarf I love accessorizing with the faux fur and I'm trying to figure out the bottom uh, because the <laughs> Usually when you have a lot of volume on the top, I like to make something uh, tight at the bottom so it's not too bulky. So <laughs> I'm gonna try maybe with the help of Charlize to make an A-line skirt. Um, but this fabric, this yeah, one right? yeah. will be good. I'm starting to cut, they're very beautiful, yeah. dramatic moment. Um, and yeah, and my inspo is definitely uh, a fashion girl from New York City, getting to the- I love her. So, <laughs> I'll let you know Great. that you more. Yes. <laughs> so the, the shapes that we looked at earlier for um, an A-line skirt, you just need to make a trapezoid. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm gonna make go a back. Yep, make a trapezoid and you're gonna want to leave, um, you're gonna want to leave an opening in the back so you can cut two trapezoids and then we'll we'll come back to you and we'll 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 hook you up. <laughs> Cause we could do like a side, a side, um a side velcro or something. We'll we'll figure it out. Charlize, how can I make shorts? I wanted to make denim shorts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you want to make shorts, you're gonna have to measure your girl's thighs. Oh, thighs too. Okay. Her rise. Mm -hmm. I know. That's why I was like, we might want to make skirts and dresses today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
and that's that's gonna be um a couple it's gonna be two pieces that basically you know i'm good go from here to here and here to here and you sew it down the middle i'm good i'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go next back. class, next class. <laughs> yeah, pants are harder. Yes. Like, what pattern do you um sew in? Like, do you sew what? upwards or downwards? Okay, I'm gonna get there. The main thing is whatever is comfortable for you. It's just as long as you're sewing fur to fur and you're sewing on the outer edge. Mm -hmm. So when you open it up, it's just fur. You don't see the seam. So you could, if you want to sew up, that's fine. But for the fur, what I would do is I would sew, with, I sewed on my machine, but what I'm going to do when I hand sew is I'm going to sew around. I'm not going to sew in and out, in and out. I'm going to sew around the edge. So I'll, I'll show you guys that. I just have to cut this piece out. But the second piece is one inch wide by nine inches long for people who are making this fur vest. And then I'm going to cut it out and stuff. Okay, so while Charlize is measuring and cutting, because she, she is making the vest right now, I just want to check in with everyone. Um, Talisha, how are you doing, honey? How, how's it going over there for you? Good. Yeah, show us what you've been working on. Um, let's see who else. Carrie, Ari, how's it going for you guys too? Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you guys working on right now? I'm doing the dress. And I'm working on mm -hmm. this one that's here. All right, awesome, perfect. Samaya, so how about you? How, how's it going and what are you working on? It's going great and right now we're doing a skirt. Okay. Ooh. I can't good. wait to see everybody's stuff. I know. Um, Taya, what are you working on? I'm working on a fur hat. Oh, what kind of hat? Like a bucket hat, a beret? It just, it's like kind of like a headband. It's just supposed to go around through here, kind of like this. Hold on, I can't, I gotta change the view. Hold on, okay. I will spotlight you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, uh, show us. Oh. Cool. We have a little. We have some guests. Pluto and Astro are joining us as well. Hey! <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, it's like uh, um, it's, it's like little, that? Astro's birthday. Happy I hold birthday. on. We have the spotlight for Astro. Let me let me get let me get to you guys. <laughs> Yay! You guys check out the two pups that are here with us today. Everyone say hello to the puppy. Oh, so Hi, puppies. <laughs> This is Astro. Hey, Astro. Hi, Astro. Hi, everyone. Happy birthday, Astro. Is that like Happy a little birthday. mohawk? Yeah. So she's, cute. She's, <laughs> she's very rock chic. That's her insult. <laughs> Love it. That's dope. Good night, guys, and your design. Good night. <laughs> I love it. OK. Um, let's see what else you guys are working on. Nivy and Majesty, what are you guys making? I see. Nivy, can you hear us? What are you guys making? And Majesty. Oh, for my doll, I'm um right now I'm working on leg warmers. Ooh. Hold on, I have to I have to spotlight you so you can we can see. Yeah, show us the leg warmer. <laughs> Uh, this is hot, one of them. Oh, oh, that is so cute. Oh, I love it. Those are perfect. And what's Majesty working on? What are you going to do? I'm doing a hat. <laughs> we can't see you, Majesty. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, so cool. Thank okay, you. Okay, so I got my pieces cut. So we have to remember on remember on the first one I made, you're gonna need an opening for your girl to get in and out of it. So Charlie, we have a quick question from a student. Oh yeah. Who's that? Jasmine, go ahead, honey. You can unmute. Okay, so what do we do after we get the um the needle inside the thread? Because I finally got it in. All right. Okay. 
<laughs> pick some fabric that you want to make something. And do you know what you want to make? Or do you want to make what we're making, the vest? It's up to you. you the sky is the limit. I'm just showing you guys how to sew so you don't see the stitches. So this is the first one I made and there's an opening and it's about two, I think it was two and a half inches from each side. Yeah, so two and a half inches. So I'm only gonna sew in two and a half inches on this side and two and a half inches on that side. So you can mark it off and safety pin the pieces together where you're gonna stop sewing. The fur's a little thick, so I don't know if the safety pins are gonna go all the way through, um, which is also why I have this mat that has all my inches on it. It's very helpful because I can just look at where I'm, what I'm doing and stop. Um, but I'm gonna try to safety pin it and do it the right way. I'm gonna try. Oh, there's some, oh, there's also straight pins. Great, there are straight pins. So straight pins are even better than safety pins. They're just a little um, tricky because you, you might, you gotta be careful you don't poke yourself. So when you're sewing pieces together, you wanna pin it first so that it stays mm -hmm. while you're sewing. So it's nice and neat. So you have pins. Can we have someone hold up the straight pin so that we can see, everyone can see what the straight pin is and where it can be located? Okay, thank you, Jim. I'm gonna spotlight you, Jim. Go ahead, straight pin. This is the straight pin. Someone else also had it there. I think, was it Dejanay? Dejanay, yes. Mm -hmm. She had it there as well. And the straight pin, it doesn't have the, um, the hole through it. It just has a flat top. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And where can they find that straight pin? You can find it in this small, small box where it has a, buttons inside of it. If everybody has the same, it's a small, sorry, the light is a little, but um, awesome. Thank you. I used it to make, I think I'm getting somewhere with a little. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so cute. Thank you. Okay. So much, Thank All right, you. go ahead, Charlize. Yeah, so you, when you pin something together, you wanna make sure you go in and out, over, under, and it needs to go through both pieces. So it holds it together. So. It, because what you don't want is when you start sewing for the fabric and stuff to start moving and slipping, because then it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be right. You're not gonna like how it comes out when that happens. It's gonna be bunchy or you're just gonna end up taking all your stitches right back out. So I'm pinning both pieces together and I did up to two inches. So I'll, your pins also mark where you begin and end your sewing too. So. I know I'm starting on this side and I'm ending here. And then I'm gonna leave all this room for my girl to get in and out of her, her vest and do the same thing on the other side, two, inch, two and a half inches in. Okay. Two and a half inches. On my table. And again, you check, you make sure it goes through both sides. And this is for any time you're, you're sewing, whether it's with a machine or by hand, you're gonna pin everything before you start. So, because this way, Everything comes out really nice and neat and secure. Me and these nails. I usually have a magnet. <laughs> um, that's another trick. If you have um, a magnet, it's really easy to clean up pins. And some, and I actually have a magnetic wand where all my pins stick to. That's actually so a great idea. That's it's really great. Idea. Like I literally will just like be on the floor, like with the wand picking up pins that I, my eyes don't even see. So um, you, you can get the, the wands, they're at the fabric store. Um, 
you know, and that's where you can house all your pins and then you can put it in a separate little zipper container or box or, you know, whatever your sewing kit is. Yes, did you know? I was gonna say they have a metal plate where you can hold it. So for example, um, this is a metal yep. plate. You can just keep it here. Wait, can yep. you hold that up one more time? Yep, that's the magnetic yeah, holder. Everyone. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dijanine. Okay. So this bar is really thick. So you got to pay attention when you're sewing that it goes through both sides because what'll end up happening is it'll go like this and it's just through the fur, not through the back of the fabric on the other piece. So you got to really look and pay attention. So, okay, yes, now it's going through both sides. And I'm just gonna do like a really quick stitch and I'm going over. See? The fabrics, the first so thick you can barely see the, um, the stitches, but I'm going over. I'm not going in and out back and forth. I'm going over the edge. And as do you do the same? Oh, sorry. Do you do the same mm -hmm. on rectangle method with if you're gonna make a jean jacket. So if you want to make a jean jacket, you like want to without make, any you, sleeves. Yeah, you can make a jean vest like that if you wanted to. So yeah, this is just a really quick, easy vest. Um, another way you can make a vest is by doing one piece for the back and two pieces for the front. And what you need to do in that case is measure um, the armholes and then measure from the shoulder to the waist or hip, wherever you want it to start, stop, and then measure the back, the same thing. And you're gonna make a couple uh, of shapes based off of those measurements. I can, <clears throat> I can show you some pattern pieces and how to draw that in a second. I love that, Aaliyah. Can you hold that to the screen again? That little fur, <laughs> that little fur vest you have. It's so cute. And the colors are really, really good. Um, to our yeah. family, it's, the colors are so beautiful and vivid. And you guys could like mix up the colors. It doesn't have to be all one color. You know, you can do three or four colors. We believe in that. Definitely use the rainbow. Each season, um, Loren creates um, a rainbow of um, all the piece, all the colors that she wants to use for the collection. So definitely. We create. love colors for sure. You know, to brighten your day. Especially in the winter. It's so nice to be in bright colors in the winter. Exactly. What, um, so I know we have like a bunch of different uh, types of faux fur. Can you guys tell us what, what two Charlize is using right now? Charlize, all right. So she's using two types of fur, the blue fur that she's currently um, sewing. This is uh, for us, our lightweight, we call it plush, and it's made of recycled polyester, 100% recycled polyester. And then the purple one that some of you may have and that Charlize has, it's actually, very new and it's plant based so it's made out of hemp hemp mm. is um it's a leaf um and so basically they use the leaf and they transform it into a fiber and with this fiber um they blend it with uh recycled polyester and they are able to make this faux fur so which is quite amazing because it's important for our planet to use you know fabrics that are sustainable, fabrics that we can make out of plants, out of fruits, right? Out of um, any type of natural uh, fibers. So this is definitely really cool because it's still very soft and nice and stylish and fashion, but it's also better for the environment. That's awesome. Yay. Very, very cool. She's struggling again. <laughs> I finished my vest. Oh, let me see. Oh my God, I love wow. it. 
Beautiful. Nice, Leah. So cool. I love the red with the purple dress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. Cheek. Yeah, that looks really great. Bravo. <laughs> I want to see who else. Who else finished? Yeah, this? who's got some stuff going? Let's see. Let's let's go around. Victoria, you want to call out some some of our scholars so we can see who's doing what? Sure. Let me change my view here. Jasmine, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Do you have you have you created anything for your doll yet? Yeah, I was doing a like a jacket, like, you know, like, I didn't finish the other armhole yet, but I would get to that part. It looks great so far. I love it, I love it. Okay, let's see. How about you, Samaya? How are you doing? Yeah, hold those dolls up to the screen. Let's see what's going on. We're making a skirt. Awesome. What fabric did you use? Is that like silk? I can't make So what fabric do you use? Nice, very pretty. <laughs> Taya, how are you doing with your hat? Really good. Really good? Oh, I, I like it. It's oh, my God, it's so good. Yes. I want one of those in real life. <laughs> I know. It reminds me of the movie, Um, you know, the the preppy, clueless. Uh, mm -hmm. That's yeah. what that reminds me of. It totally reminds me of clueless. I just watched that movie the other day. <laughs> Classic. I think I'm gonna rewatch that. That is such a classic. I haven't seen it in so long. There's so much style inspiration in that movie. Yeah, they actually had it on the plane. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I feel like okay. some clueless uh, 90s inspo. Yeah. Oh, I like that. How, what did you make, Ashaya? Or what are you making? Nice. Wow, that's so pretty. Is, is that, that a one piece? piece? Or is that two pieces, Ashaya? It's two pieces. You're kind Let of like mine a little bit. Mine a little bit like that skirt. Oh, nice. <laughs> Those are so great. <laughs> oh, I'm making, a, I'm making a two piece. So I'm making a jeans crop top and a jeans skirt with this. Awesome. With the jacket. Awesome. I love it. What about you, Shanice? Show us what you got so far. I didn't make anything yet, but I'm trying to make a skirt with the, like, the red fabric. Okay, nice, nice. Go ahead, take your time. If you, if you need help, let us know. Who else? How about you, Sophia? I can't hear you. Okay. Sorry, can you say it one more time? Okay, cool. I'm planning on making How about you, Talisha? How are you doing? Good. Is that a jean skirt? Yeah. Very cute. Yeah. Super cute. You guys are doing awesome. I know, right? I'm like, I'm still on my fur vest. <laughs> <laughs> They're done. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Naomi? What do you have? What do you, what do you guys have so far? Give us a sneak peek.
We're still working on it. We're still working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's the big reveal. No worries. I am so. These little girls are showing us. <laughs> you all are good. I yeah, like good. the two piece. The um, Ashaya. Hers is so. Pretty. Yeah, hers is so pretty. Love it. I struggled with mine a little bit. You look like you just did it with ease, girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's okay if you guys want to like, you know, there's other methods besides cutting pattern pieces. You can always like drape the fabric on your girl until you figure out the shape, you know? Yeah, let's talk about draping because that's something that I am a lot more... Um, I guess, good at, because mm -hmm. I, I was never a cut and sew kind of creator. So mm -hmm. talk about draping, Charlize, and what that is and why it's useful for this project. So draping is basically you take the fabric on the actual form, dress form body, and you would, you know, in this case, depending on what shape I want <clears throat> of the skirt, I would make various um, alterations. So if I want the skirt to be this A-line shape, you see how the waist is kind of too high and sticking up? Well, you would just pin it, sew it, pin it, sew it to make it fit at a waistband, you know? Um, so it's just a little bit different of a process versus cutting and sewing a pattern piece and making a pattern. It's just literally draping the fabric on the body and let me find a bigger piece. Draping the fabric on the body and pinning and, you know, basting, hand stitching. You know, if I wanted a, a situation like this and then like a dress like this, and then I could close it on this side and, you know, so draping is, uh, is very, very useful. I mean, I think like it's where a lot of innovation comes from is when you let the fabric dictate what you what the garment is going to be versus the pattern dictating it. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of draping. When I made the gold outfit that I drew, I didn't make a pattern first. I just started draping it on a on a form and you know creating the the dress. So you know I think draping is very very useful. A lot of people. Um, do a combination of both or in some people exclusively drape and like that's it um i would say with draping you should like technically with the dress that i made i should have draped it first in a muslin that is the same weight as the fabric but i am a rebel and i rarely <laughs> drape in muslin first i just use the fabric um it's how i've always done it and it makes a lot of people nervous but <laughs> that's how i've always done it and so far it's worked out, um, but I also try not to do that with like crazy expensive fabrics. Um, if the fabric is crazy expensive, I don't do that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of draping as well. I, I rarely use patterns unless, the reason why you would use a pattern is if it's something that is like a well-established design, like, you know, like a sailor short or a jean or a, a sweat pant, like, something that is like a commonly worn garment that you just want in like, you know, a specific color or you want to modify the pattern slightly, um, you know? So that's, that's when you would use patterns more as if it's like a commonly used or worn garment that, cause you know, it's like, why would you go through all the work of draping something that exists? You know, draping is more for for you to like get out your creative original ideas. Right. Um, so yeah, that's draping versus patterns. Yeah, I'm I'm really big on draping um, and just kind of just letting the body create the garment. Um, and I wanted to really quickly jump in and let you guys know that. Remember, there are other tools in your kit to help you um, outside of sewing. So you see the, the little zip ties? If you guys look up these little plastic zip ties, you can use that to hold the fabric onto the Barbie and to cinch the waist. So what I did just now, um, 
I just did like a like a very uh, a very luxurious wrap skirt. <laughs> this is very old Hollywood. Um, I love that. And I'm a metal artist, so I, I make metal clothing. And the top part is this tiny little metal top that I made um, some time ago. So what I did was just wrap the apparatus for around my miniature mannequin. And I used the zip tie to just hold it together. So all you'd have to do is wrap it around. And at the back, there's this little insert. You insert it and you just pull and it's gonna hold, it's not gonna release. So, you know, for those of you who don't want to kind of sew certain parts together, use that zip tie. There's four, I believe there's about four or five of them that you guys have. It'll, it'll help the process. Um, I do mine, I use Velcro. I use the little Velcro things to keep the top and the skirt together. Yeah, can you show us nice. Victoria how you used that Velcro? I'm gonna spotlight you. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me find it. So, okay, so here, they're like little stickers. So you can take one, you see, it was hard to get it to stick to the fur at first, but you take one and you stick it on, let's see her top. So you stick one on the fur and then one on the inside of the lining so that when you stick it together, it, they meet like that when you close up her top. And to measure, so for each piece I measured, I used my measurements for her, um, for her bust and for her hip to measure the skirt and the top to make sure that it would, you know, it wouldn't be too long or too short. And then you just stick on the stickers and then put it together. So it's like a no sew outfit. That's perfect. So smart. I'm about to use the Velcro on my little under, undergarment that's going to go into my fur. I have, I found some iridescent fabric. Ooh. I, I was thinking, I wish I had like some rhinestone fabric or something to put like in the middle, make it, make it shine. Iridescent fabric is perfect. So I finished my blue vest now. So now I got a blue vest and a purple vest. My girl got options for the winter, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Charlize, how about the earrings and the hairstyle on your doll? Can you please? I, oh, you this one. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 she has like this really cool jacket that I was showing y'all for how to hide your stitches. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a whole, it's a whole look. It's a whole thing. That yeah, I bought it because so I was beautiful. like, she looks like me. <laughs> Where can we find a Barbie like that? Is that a, a specific, was that a collaboration or a, re a specific retailer or a designer who made that? Um, it was like this collection called BMR 1959, but I got it on Amazon. I love that. With yeah, the, I got it on Amazon. Hoop earrings, or did you put the hoop earrings on? No, it came with the earrings, with the hair, with the edges. <laughs> yeah. So cute. Love it. I was going to ask, like, did you do that hairstyle on, on her hair? I love it. Yeah, she's cute. All right, so I got my little fur situations. Now I wish I mixed, well, you know what? I might add another la layer or tier of fur. I might. Or you know what else you could do if I wanted to? Could add like, you could cut out like a circle and add a circle of fur and a different color or a star. Like you know, there's so many fun things you can do. So that is an idea for that. Oh, so let's make sure this fits. So yeah. And then the last step, like I was showing you guys earlier, is just tacking it in so it's nice and nice and luxurious. So cute. So good. So that would be my last step is to like tack the fur on the inside. Um, <clears throat> but 
I wanted to figure out what she's gonna wear underneath. I do have this fabric. So let me find my measurements. Oh yeah, this fabric too. Ooh. Yeah, we have multiple. You have so much uh, fabric there with you guys. I mean, for especially for this tiny little body. Um, so make sure that you, you know, you use use what you have. Um, I have a question. Yeah, who has a mm -hmm. question? Go ahead. Um, what is it called? I was planning on doing like I changed my mind. I was gonna plan on doing like two different like half side color jeans. So mm -hmm. one side this color, one side this color. So do you have to like cut? like a rectangular shape and combine it into like a um so you have to let me just show you get, get her undressed because it's going to be easier to show you this way so you would have to do one leg one leg like this and then another leg like this, and then you attach it in the middle. So let me see if I can show you a pair of pants. If you have a pair of pants, if you look on, this is how you also learn how to make things. If you look at the inside of a pair of your jeans and you look at how it's stitched together. So the legs are stitched together like here, but then in the rise part, you're gonna stitch the two colors together. So let me see if I can, So it would be, this would be stitched together, the two different colors in the rise part here, but the legs are gonna be stitched to themselves. So this color is stitched to itself on the legs, this color is stitched to itself on the legs. Does that make sense? Um, oh, I have a pair of jeans right here. They're a little falling apart, but I think you'll get the idea. So when you look on the inside of jeans, this is a stitch in, in the butt, the crotch, and then to the front, that's one stitch. So from here all the way around to the back. So from your belly button underneath to the top of your butt crack, that's one stitch, right? And then your legs, or right, down the inside of the leg is a different stitch. So it's a little tricky, it's a little tricky. You would wanna do um, the legs first, the two separate legs first, and leaving from the crotch to the, the rise in the front and the back, leaving that open, and then doing that part last. So you're gonna wanna make the legs first, stitch them together, but you need to measure it. So you need to measure from the waist to the ankle. You're gonna need to measure your rise from your belly button all the way up to the back. You need to measure front and back, belly button to here, waist to here. You need to measure your thighs. You need to measure your knees. You need to measure around your ankles. I can show you in my book too. I brought my pattern making book out. I can show you guys. Pants are a little trickier, but it's doable. Completely doable. So these are the, this is how you would measure for your pants. Your waist, your hip, it's called crotch depth. That's that rise front and back we're talking about. Your knee, your ankle. Arby, my love, I mean, Arby. Let me know if this is confusing. Arby. And then this is what the pattern piece, this is what the pants pattern piece looks like when you're done. So that's your hip, that's your crotch, that point there that curve there for your, your, your crotch. This is the curve here, right? These are all your measurements, knee, ankle, 
this is the crease line, this is the center. This is where all your stitches are. So that's what the pants pattern looks like. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I'm just looking around. You all are doing such an amazing job. Like I'm seeing a lot of great, uh, great pieces. I love the leg warmers, the hat. I'm Ayasa, Ayasha, Ayesha. I'm, I'm, goodness, I'm so sorry. Ashaya. Ashaya, Ashaya. My whole name is actually Olu Jamibaya, so I need to, I can. Uh, we can do better. I can do better. Uh, Ashaya, I really love your outfit there. Yeah, I love the little leg warmers that you have. I want to do, I want to have, I want to add that to mine too. That's a boots with the fur, like a good, like a, like a. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Amazing. You, you all are doing cool. So good. Does anybody want to share what they got done so far? Yes, let's do some sharing because I can't believe it that it is already three o'clock. <laughs> I know, and I, I have to leave in 15 minutes. I'm yes, so, so let's do let's do some sharing, you guys, because in, in about uh, 15 minutes, we um we are going to be complete with today's lesson. I can't believe it's been two hours already. It's so, so fast. Around. Um, I'll, I'll call out some names. Let's see what you guys have so far. All right, Aaliyah, go ahead and show us what you are leaving us today with. Oh, you're, you're muted. Well, I'm not done yet, but this is, I made like a little vest. Like you can kind of see like the arm fold right here. Let's see. And I was gonna, I was sewing in my jeans and stuff. I was gonna make one side denim and another side white. So it's like two different colored jeans. And I was gonna make a top part the same color as the jeans. And I'm gonna put like pom-poms on the high heels to, the, to match the same color I put as the denim and the white. Awesome. Amazing. Yes. Okay. So I can't wait to see I, those jeans. I know, I've, I'm, I'm really excited to, to see what the results are. Um, before I go to the next scholar, you know, I, we completely forgot to make this very special announcement. So, you know, you guys are designing, but this is a secret design competition because Charlize is, Charlize, tell us what you're going to be giving away. What three items are you going to be giving away? Oh, so we have three sewing machines. Three sewing away. machines, ladies. Yep. So this is a design challenge. Mm -hmm. So how it works is Charlize has three sewing machines that she has so graciously donated to the Academy. So if you guys are a Brooklyn-based, New York, uh, just New York-based uh, scholar, um, the, the winners are going to receive the machine. Um, we're going to drop it off to you, but we're, we understand that you can't finish creating all of this beauty in just, you know, an hour and a half to two hours. So we're going to allow you guys some time to continue to work on your, you know, your designs. And, um, we're going to email all of your parents so that you can submit a small little video showing us your work and telling us what the inspiration was. Um, and for those of you who are out of state, you could win a whole box filled with more of this amazing Paris fur, just so that you can keep creating, you can give some to your friends, you can give some to your family. So we definitely encourage you guys to continue to create these, these looks because who wouldn't want a sewing machine? You know, I, I waited years to get a sewing machine. I think I was about 17, 16 or 17 before I, I got one. So, you know, it'll be so amazing to see what you guys are able to create. Um, all right, let's see. Naomi, go ahead and give us a glimpse of what you have so far. If you guys have anything, no pressure. This is a red carpet look, honey. Ooh, that's like your drawing. Oh, Naomi, okay. <laughs> I oh, wow. love she, she made an accessory, a purse. We're, we're, we careful with the needle. That looks amazing, hey. Nay. She has a, a, we're working on a clutch, maybe a <laughs> mitt to warm her, keep her hands warm. Wow. 
A muff. I love it. Yeah. And, then you can put, and she can put, look, and then she can put her hands through like this. Okay, I'm going to use some. I'm going to use That's amazing. Good job. Great job. Don't be deceived. The zip tie is holding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's fine. That's, listen, my dress, I was telling, uh, I think I told Friday this. I ran out of time to finish this gold dress. The whole hem is top stitched with, with double stick tape because I ran out of time. Can you tell? No. <laughs> Love okay. that. Great, great job, Naomi. Um, and thank you to Naomi's design assistant. You did a great job today. <laughs> Naomi, she needs a raise. Make sure you promote her. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Sophia, show us what you have and tell us where your girl is going. Give us a little story. I started, oh, I started pants out of a fabric. I started pants out of a fabric. And I so yes. Hold hold up your hold up your girl so that we can see her, Sophia. I haven't put the clothes on yet. I just started the fabric for the pants. Okay, no problem, no problem. Sorry, Can't wait to on. see. Um, okay, that's Samaya, go ahead and show us your girl. Tell us where she's going in her new look. Hmm. Don't forget to unmute Samaya. I hope you're not working your design assistant too hard over there. I see mom is, <laughs> mom has her glasses on. She's focused. <laughs> she is, she is. You want to show it to her? Yeah. Okay. So show it to her. Go ahead. And you describe it. Okay. I'm going to fix it. We're not done yet. They know you're not done. Okay. So I did a skirt. In the middle of this way. Love that. And oh, the, the fur jacket. Ooh. I'm so happy with all these little fur jackets. Thank you so much for showing me this, Charlize. Huh? I said thank you so much for showing them how to make the fur jacket because it, it it's a hit. Yeah. I like, I'm, I'm like, how do I make it to fit me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Even much. Even though it's not winter anymore. Come by to the office, we can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jem and Lauren will make sure you have a full size. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> um, Dejanay, go ahead and show us, honey, what you have so far, no pressure. Okay, so. I only got to finish the undergarment. I'm only making one undergarment. I'm gonna make a top and I'm gonna make a skirt. So it's like the entire outfit. So right now I only made the pants. <laughs> and um love it. I'm gonna so this is like I made a pants for myself. So I just did this in like my own scrap fabric that I have. Because it's just gonna be under the garments. So I didn't really care much for the design. And um I'm trying to make a double circle skirt. So I had to like break up the calculator, <laughs> but um, like right now, um, it's just sort of one part of the circle skirt, and then I'm gonna like gather it, and then I'm gonna make the other part, and then I'm gonna gather it, and I'm gonna sew it together. Then I'm gonna make a um square neck top, and then that would be the entire garment. I'm basing this off of the sound of music, so yeah. Nice. Love it. I can't wait to I, see. Your... That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see your um, 
your ending video. Um, Shanice, show us what you got. So I didn't finish sewing yet, but what I want to do is make like a, a top out of this fabric and make a, like a fluffy red skirt out of this one so it will match like the top one. Nice. That's good. I love that you're, you're choosing to use both of those reds. I love that. Such a romantic red, that, that deep color so good and it matches so well with the red of Paris for thank you Shay um okay let's see majesty and Nivy what do you guys have show us your your progress so majesty didn't finish hers but for mine I have this yellow cape with blue on the back and mm -hmm. then uh fluffy bracelet you can call it mm -hmm. i didn't quite finish her pants but it's going to be a fluffy fluff, fluffy green pants um and she has her leg warmers love it i love the colors that you combined that looks really yeah, cool very funky creative with all the different <laughs> colors i love it i just also want to step in and say the way you all use the fur is trim definitely great inspiration for future like products and designs a nice uh fur trim is like the perfect accent mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay um does anyone else we'll just freestyle the rest does anyone else want to share <clears throat> okay go ahead taya i saw you raise your hand um I have this like kind of like a two top and then the skirt and you just put the hat on like this and it's done. Love this hat. Oh, I love that. That so hat cool. is so cool. Thank you. Are those fur boots too? Oh no, it's the leg warmers, right? No, it's just the shoes that she has. Oh, I thought that was boots. That was your hand. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Taya. You're welcome. <clears throat> Does anyone else want to share? Talisha, do you want to share what you what you've created? Make sure you guys keep an eye on those needles. If you hadn't already, make sure you put it back in your um, your little box. All right, so um, I guess we will, Carrie and Ari, do you guys wanna share? Show us what you have so, uh, so far. I want to show you my skirt that I made. Use the pom-poms. Yeah, I'm happy you use the pom-poms. Excellent. Uh -huh. I was trying to make like, a dress and then put like a fur and like put like a fur cape around it. Yeah, show us again, Carrie. Let's see the, the little fur. Yeah, that looked just like mine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah, so <clears throat> make sure that you guys continue. Like I mentioned, we are going to send that email to your parents um, and to let you know how you can submit your video so that you can win some, some things, win a sewing machine and win a box of fabric. And you know what, whoever wins the sewing machine will add, will add an extra, some extra fabric for you to continue working. Um, thank you guys so much for, I can't, I cannot believe the time. Thank you guys so much for designing today. Um, before Miss Charlize, uh, leaves us for the day, I definitely want to see Jem and Lauren's, uh, results. So go ahead and show us what you have. We don't have to show hers. Oh, uh, guys. <laughs> so, so, wow. <laughs> Love it. 
It's very... Um... We wanted to keep it only for fur, I guess, because we are part of a Paris. <laughs> oh, the feathers are great. <laughs> the full on full fur. So, and I think like you said earlier, Charlize, you know, sometimes you have a vision. And when I chatted earlier with you guys, I wanted to do a poncho and an A-line skirt. But then I reviewed my design and just made this like <laughs> oversized, over the top dress. And I used the same, you know, this cord thing. And mm -hmm. I put it to cinch her waist. And then I, the scalp that I had, I turned it into this dramatic belt. Yes. And I wanted to pair the belt with like this little hat. And I was actually inspired with, from one of the um, students. Mm -hmm. So thank you for inspiring me. And then I just felt like it was missing this wow factor. So I thought the bright yellow and the ever glade green would be like a cool additional match for this again over the top new york maybe like a met gala <laughs> outfit versus going to the office so, yeah. i love it that's so fun what about you jen uh so mine uh is a fusion between uh 90s i'm a barbie girl from the group aqua that's where the skirt comes from and then from uh there was a show growing up very similar to Girlfriends where uh, I think I would say that the show on HBO got their inspiration from Girlfriends um, and it took place in the city and um, one of the main characters, Carrie, had uh, like a skirt that had a little tool at the back. I just always remember seeing that and thinking they must have really sewn that on her before they began to film and I thought it was very cool. Uh, and. Uh, I repurposed the initial uh, vest and jacket that Loren wanted to make. And <laughs> I created a little uh, shawl uh, situation here, which I think looks very elegant. And it has uh, the feathers uh, as, uh, as the top. Uh, and then I have like a little tool. Um, and the inspiration from this is from uh, Saved by the Bell, which was a show in the 90s, Lisa Turtle. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I have a, I have a '90s um, Barbie girl dream world upcycling girlfriends fusion. So, uh, so this is the new age. Uh, this, you know what? This is this is me. This is me. <laughs> I love the whole. And I'm her. Her. <laughs> so great. Oh, for like, we Talisha tried. wanted to share hers as well. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. So good. Who did you say, Victoria, who wanted to share? That's Alicia. Oh, Talisha. Go ahead, Talisha. So I did this um, denim skirt and this I'm denim shirt traveling. with um, a, um, a scarf. It's so cute. I love that little necktie. It's so yeah. cute. Can you show it again? That necktie yeah. is so chic. Yes. And where oh, she, yes. Where is she going with that outfit, Talisha? I don't know. <laughs> like, girl, you got to give us, where is she going to the mall? Is she going shopping with her friends? Is it a, a movie date? Where is she going? <laughs> that's, that's giving me like Monaco. She needs some sunglasses. Yeah. Ooh. She needs a big sunny, big sunglass and a hat. That scarf is giving me all that those vibes. Yes. I shy I wanted to show her his team. And um, you know, when we ask you guys, where's your girl going? What is she doing? We want you to tap into your imagination, you know, because every good creative, every good creator can tell a story with what they're creating. So um, Charlize, but before we end off, can you tell us how important storytelling is when it comes to costume designing? and how uh, understanding how to story tell? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think storytelling is uh, essential for costume design, but it's also foundational for um, fashion design as well. Because, you know, in the, in the sense of when you're a fashion designer, you know who your customer is and what your customer does and you design for that, right? When I'm designing costumes for a film, I'm designing based on what my character's motivations are, what my character's doing in the scene, what my character's social economic background is, um, and just like what their what their vibe is, what their style is, and also what kinds of actions that 
happen in the in the scene. So if they have to reach in their pocket for something, I have to make sure the garment has a pocket. You know, if it's scripted in the script, I have to make sure that, you know, that action can happen. So um, I think storytelling is is essential for all kinds of designers, all kinds of designers, you know, but um, specifically to costumes, it's about what the character is doing, what their motivations are, you know, so. Absolutely. Okay, we have one more that's interested in sharing. Go ahead, Ashaya. Okay, so my doll has on a two-piece, kind of, <sighs> and her shoes are like leg warmer, and she has this little purse. Well, I can't make... uh, She's going to the Grammy Awards. Yes, Grammys. Grammys. Is she performing? Um, yeah. Okay, there we and, go. <laughs> and after she is going out with some friends, and she can remove the leg warmers, and she has like, yes, love the. I love it of the shoe. I, I think that the the blue shoe works so well with the red. Thank you so it much. It does. Yes. <clears throat> Can we hold up our dolls and take a picture? Yeah, let's all let's do our group photos, you guys. My doll's not done. <laughs> and mine, the inspiration for mine was Rihanna. Yes, she had to take a movie in Ocean's Eight when they robbed the Met Gala. This is her. Life. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yes. Let's see. And the fur and the little the little fur hat. Yeah, it's a, it's a feather. I use the feather. Oh, feather. <laughs> I oh, love my doll's that. not done. Okay, Charlize, tell us about those sleeves. Show us those sleeves. Wow. Um, I wanted to reimagine an angel. That's, that's you know, that was my inspiration is an angel. Yeah. A chic angel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, my girl is, um, she's currently in the studio. She's not out right now. Uh, and she has a little metal, a little metal mesh top. It's sleeveless, and this beautiful grand fur bottom. And then, if you can see the back, uh, there's a piece of the metal that's draping down at the back to give a little extra drama. <laughs> all right, you guys all did such a great job today. Thank you for being creative with us. It was so amazing to meet all of you and to workshop with you. Let's get a group photo before we do our final activity with Miss Victoria. Everyone hold your, um, hold your model to the, close to the screen. Okay, so we're gonna take three photos. We're gonna do first, gonna do a nice little smile, right? Everybody ready? Make sure you're next to your girl so we can see. Let's make, let me see if I can see everyone's face. Okay, Shay, hold up your girl. Dejanay, hold up your girl. It doesn't matter if you didn't finish, just hold her up with whatever she has on. Sophia, Samaya, go ahead and hold up your girl. Taya, oh my God, that little bag is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> pom-pom bag, that's dope. A little pom-pom bag. Um, okay, let's go. Oh. Kerry just came back in. Okay, Kerry, come on, we're taking the group photo. Go ahead and unmute your screen. Ho hold your doll up next to your screen, Kerry, really quickly. And, and, and Ari, we're taking a photo. You guys ready? Okay, one, two, three, big smiles. All right, second pose, model pose with your girl. Give us a little smile. America's Next Top Model taught us well. Okay, ready? One, two, three. All right, last photo is silly face. Everybody get your silliest face on. Hold, hold up your girl next to you and get on your silliest face. Love yours, Taya. <laughs> ready? One, two, three. All right, yes, everybody. Yeah. Get Applause, please. You that guys did amazing. Charlize, do you have any final words before you uh, leave the room today? Um, no, just keep creating. 
keep drawing, keep creating. And, you know, now that you know how to measure and create shapes, you can start making clothes for yourself too. And oh, continue to look at your, your clothes and inspect how they're made because that's how you're gonna learn how to make clothes. So when you turn your clothes inside out, inspect how they're stitched and what stitched to what and how, just keep just doing that kind of work and it helps you a lot as a designer. Thank you so much, Charlize. And please know this is just the second of three costume design workshop um, workshops that Charlize is going to be doing. So we have one more coming up in the future and we'll make sure that we let you guys know. Um, we're gonna get a, a little bit more intense the, the, the third time and do a lot more. So I'm so happy what we were able to achieve today. Special thank you to Jem and Lauren yeah. from Paris for donating, sponsoring this amazing fur. Thank you, and for being here with us. Thank you guys so much. That does mean a lot. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, okay, so thank you so much, Charlize. We do appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Bye, and everybody. Bye. And then now, Victoria, go ahead and close us off with our ending affirmation. Okay, so do you guys, any of you who were here during our last workshop, can anyone tell me what an affirmation is? Mm. Anyone? No one? Everyone's shy. Being shy. Day Day Janae, 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 Taya. Yeah, I know you got one of you now. <laughs> is it, isn't it like um, a powerful, like encouraging words and stuff like that? Yes. Yep. It's an uplifting statement that we tell ourselves to help shift our mindset into positive thinking. And it just shapes the way that we talk to ourselves. So today I'm going to share an app. It's going to be a little bit different than last time. I'm going to share an affirmation with you guys. Um, how do I share my screen here? Okay. Thank you, Taya. You're welcome. Okay, so today's affirmation is, I have the power to create and design the life of my dreams. So, sorry, I should have told you this before we started. If you can still see me, we're gonna um, actually write down our affirmation. So we're gonna take out the cards that are in our workshop kit that have like the pens, paper clip to it. We're gonna get this white card. And you can just set that aside. But first we are going to recite the affirmation together. And what this affirmation represents is just the way that you guys envision these outfits and design them for your dolls. You can do the same thing for your dream career and your life or just how you envision yourself in the future. You have the power to create and design the life of your dreams. So everyone you can unmute and we're gonna say this twice together. Yes, everyone go ahead and unmute your audio. You guys, shh. Okay, so on three, we're going to say, I have the power to create and design the life of my dreams. One, two, three. I have the power to create my dreams. Life my dreams. Awesome. One more time. Say it like you mean it. One, two, three. I have the power to create and design the life of the I love this song. Awesome. So now we're going to write it down on our paper. You can write it however you want. Write it as big or small as you want. Yeah. You can write it on paper? Yeah. What a note card. Go ahead and write that affirmation down, ladies. Yes, write it down big and bold, and then we're going to 
gonna hold it up at the end. This is such a powerful affirmation, Victoria. How how did um how did you create this one? Is it is it inspired by your own life? Sorry. Yes, this is one that I just like to tell myself often. And this was honestly inspired by just this workshop. I knew we were doing um, a costume design. So I figured it, it went well together. And this is just a, a good way of thinking to, you know, a good, a good mindset to, to keep on as we just move on in life and just remember that you know, the power of your future and your career, your creative career, whether you want to be a fashion designer, a model, a photographer, that you have the power to, to make that happen. And not only design clothes, you can design, you know, your own path and your own way of doing things. And how often should we recite our affirmations? I would say every day, but if not every day, just keep it in your heart. So when you have, you know, moments of doubt or, you know, you're going for a new goal or just any time that you feel that you need to say it to yourself, just say it. So in the morning time is great. Or when you're working on a new project, when you're pursuing a new goal, if you're trying to get a job in the future and just remind yourself, like I have the power to create and design the life of my dreams. Yay. All right, so let's go ahead and everyone hold up that paper so we can all see. Yes, and I'll take another group, another group photo of us with our affirmations. Hold it up nice and close, make sure we can we can see it. I don't know how I'm gonna hold it and screenshot it. I have to. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? One two, group. Hold up your affirmations, yes. Oh wait, Naomi, what? Okay, Naomi didn't go. All right, hold it up one more time so we can take one more picture, you guys. Ready? One, two, group. All right. Great job, round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause today. It was so great to meet all of you. We hope to see you at the next workshop. Um, thank you for creating with the Fashion with Friday Academy. Please continue to create because you all are so amazing and special and have such unique ideas. And you know, in honor of Women's History Month, we want you to honor yourselves and to be able to find inspiration and and know that you can have multiple careers in this fashion industry. You can be the founder of an amazing company, the person who does brand partnerships like Gem. You could be Charlize and design costumes and outfits for movies and films. You could, ooh, Dejeuner, that looks good. You just, you just threw me off. Look at that. It's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> You see, you could even use the um, the tissue paper and the little cutouts in your workshop kit to create a dress too and cinch it with the zip ties. So go ahead and get creative. F feel free to continue creating for the day. Um, please remember that we want you guys to win this these sewing machines. We have three of them and also the box of fabric. Um, we will email your mom, so please uh, ask your parents. Hi, Sophia's mom, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yes, blessings. Um, yes, so if anyone, does anyone have any questions? Anything, anything you guys want to ask before we leave today? All right, okay. So ladies, have an amazing day. Bye, uh, Naomi's mom. It's so great to meet you as well. Bye, Naomi. Thank bye, Taya. Bye, Dejanay. Bye, Ivy. Bye. bye, Majesty. Bye, Ashaya. Bye, Carrie. Bye, Ari. Bye, Jem. Bye, Lauren. Bye. Bye, bye Sophia. Thank you. Bye, Shanice. So good to see you again. Bye, Samaya. Bye, Dejanay. Oh wait, Sophia, you have a question. Oh, oh, you had a. I thought you were waving. Oh. Wow. Oh. 
Now it's amazing. Oh, wow. amazing. oh my God. Can we see that again? I need to see oh, that. Oh, my That is beautiful. Hold that up again. Oh, that was dope. Hold it up one more time, Sophia. Wow. 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 Look at this skirt. Wow. Like, wow. The best oh. for last. Amazing. Wow. She knew. She was yeah. like, <laughs> She's like, let me see. <laughs> Grand finale. I'll let you all finish. <laughs> like when um when we're all waiting for Beyonce to get to the Met red carpet. She's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> that, wait. that looks amazing. You did such a great job. Thank you so much, Sophia. I hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye. Have a good night.